Welcome to yet another exciting Way of the Brush. With me, your host, Chris, aka Mini Wargaming Chris, aka The Name Butcher, aka. I don't know, I got nothing else. <laughs> Way of the Brush, the most exciting, fascinating, informative 120 minutes on the internet on the wargaming subject hobby, lifestyle, where we'll cover painting, terrain, answering your questions, showing off your work, anything and everything wargaming. I like to keep it nice and broad because so many things within our realm of wargaming just kind of branch off into other things, right? Like we can, we like little space marines and yet all of us would love to see, you know, a live action space marine epic saga be told on the big screen. And of course, welcome, welcome to, to yet, yet another, another exciting, exciting way. <laughs> I'm echoing myself there. <laughs> I know, rookie mistake, right? Rookie mistake. And so, yeah. I think we'd all like to see a, a big live action, you know movie be told and i've had a thought about that i've always liked the work of uh ian watson he wrote the book uh inquisitor and harlequin and star child star child yeah star child i think it was the third part these books were the inquisitor trilogy or the the original like novels written and you know they they have some like antiquated 40k kind of ideas in them, but still the main epic story of itself, this whole kind of journey, this inquisitor as he's, you know, searching for this clue, he's, you know, on this really wild adventure. And I think if they were ever to make a movie, that would be the screenplay. And the guy who wrote the book wrote the screenplay for, um, Steven Spielberg's, uh, AI and you know I enjoyed that one it's it's long and dry but I like that one and so I see a whole bunch of you in the comments everybody just chatting up a storm I can see my good buddy Ido Gihama today on way the brush world record attempt at most innuendos about tools <laughs> Did you guys get you guys get a kick out of that one? Just a tip. <laughs> Keep <laughs> Don't be a fool. Take care of your tool. <laughs> That's really what I should have called that one. Don't be a fool. Take care of your tool. Oh, <laughs> uh, the bad edge. Let's tool up, guys. Nathan Barraza. Just don't put your tool in your mouth. <laughs> And the thing is, is like when I was initially conceptualizing that, that, um, that video and you know how I was going to explain things, I actually had it a lot worse and yeah, there, I did premeditate that one. That one wasn't just simply a, that one actually was kind of sitting on the back of the brain and I was trying to, you know, I was trying to keep it informative, but throw enough, uh, I guess innuendo, but enough little, I don't know if this is the right motion, but anyway, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, keep it light, <laughs> keep it fun, keep it kind of giggly, <laughs> giggity, <laughs> keep that tool moist, the bad edge, look after your tools, episode 48, wave the tool. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> I'm changing it right now. I'm changing it. We. I can't even spell. We of the tool. There. <laughs> How to care for your tool. You gotta always polish it. You guys know, gotta keep it clean. I know some of you older fellas out there gotta dust it off every once in a while, but you know going with any of that. Delgrath, hey guys, how's everyone today? We are well, I hope. 
I can only assume, I can only assume most of us are well. It's a nice Saturday here in the Niagara area. It's sunny, not in a lot of breeze though. It's getting kind of warm, but it's nice. The last couple of days have been real nice around here. I like my favorite kind of weather is when the sun is warm and the air is cool. There's a light breeze in the air, no humidity or very low humidity. That's my favorite kind of weather when, when it's, it's, <laughs> it's just perfect out, really. And, and I think that's pretty much everybody's favorite weather, right? <laughs> um, Mark Hill. Hi, guys. Hi, Chris. Hi, Mark. Night, Lancer. Morning, gentlemen. Morning, Lancer. It's actually afternoon for us here in North America. I don't know where Lancer is. I can only assume... West Coast? Maybe. It's early in the morning for him, maybe. Not not too early, but... DG Word. Tolo Test. That's better. Tolo Test. Why would you have to test? Test. Test. Eric's Coin. Evening. N1. How's it going? Ido Gihama. Last way of the brush until August. What will you do without me? I don't know. Where are you going? Going to go do something secretive? Going on a vacation? Going to the moon i don't know i have a rough idea just from you know chatting with ito what kind of work uh he does and uh you know maybe it's training i don't know but night lancer go crazy and snap all my paintbrushes why would you want to do that why would you why would you you're supposed to take care of your brushes don't snap your paintbrushes Ido Gihama, flip the tables, all the tables, bear stuff. <laughs> yeah. So today, uh, and again, we're just going to do straight emails again today because um, I didn't bother turning on Skype. And like, I'm looking at my first email here and it's still from June 14th. And uh, yeah, Chris has really got to catch up. I've fallen way behind. I don't know what, how did, how did we fall behind like this? I don't know. Oh, I missed an episode. That's what it is. I missed an episode. And yeah, we fell behind. And then a couple of emails were long. Not naming any names or pointing any fingers. But yeah. So let's get to an email since we're talking about it anyway. And this is from Daniel, or he goes by Drake90. Hey, yeah, Chris, long time watcher here, though this is the first in intervention of any kind into the show. I have been painting for a while now and would like your input on my painting. I know I still have a way to go and some things to perfect, but I was thinking of making a painting service and would like to know what you think as far as level of technique. The miniature shown very greatly in subject from Tyranid Army to Terrain, some Dungeons and Dragons conversions, even some soda pop miniatures, which I decided to try for fun. Well, that's good. Anyway, thank you for the great show. I hope to catch you next time live. Next, no, catch you live next time. Jeez. And I hope you will always keep your monkeys well fed. <laughs> P.S. If I ever join live, my name is Drake90, and also there will probably be two or three emails. And he did. He sent me a whole whack ton of stuff but that's okay because we like <laughs> we like lots of pictures just not lots of words <laughs> that way we don't have to hear me stumble his way through now i like these they're really high kind of contrast you know like the warriors here i like the color scheme that dark edged blue like the edging of the blue the cool white of the of the body and then you have these little yellow accents all over the place. It looks like in the tendons and things like that. I like it. I like the color scheme. It's not very close up of the painting. I see a little tyranid bit. I think that's homemade, which it looks pretty darn good. It looks tyranid-y. Corn juggernaut or no, what do they call Blood crushers? Blood crushers. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Very nice. I like the base. Bubbly. Ooh, scary. I like the deep red and the blood letter flesh. 
it's clean. I like it. I, um, I'm not sure if you're looking for like me, like to tell you what kind of level work you're doing here as really you, you're the one who has to determine that as you know, you got to work out how long it took you to get to this stage. You know, is this a weekend's worth of work or is this, you know, two weeks worth of work? You know, who look at this guy. Nice. Oh, you even painted little vials I can see. It looks like anyway. It's always very challenging. Oh, I like the texturing in the skin. I like that. That's very cool. I like that. It almost looks sore at the edges, like where it's been sewn. Is that it for that one? Okay, well, he sent me another one here. Hold on, kids. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Just hold your horses, people. And so, very cool. I'm not familiar with this model. <laughs> See, I've been, I've been toying with the idea of picking up some of these models. Um, I've seen them around, and... You know, um, one channel I follow, she's been, you know, painting a lot of these and she's been doing an anime style, um, uh, Dizzy Demon. Yeah, she's been working on stuff like this. And, I, and I've actually been kind of tempted to pick up um, a set. Ooh, very nice checkers. That's the first thing caught my eye was the, the checkers there. Very nice, clean, look pretty even. It looks like you have quite a bit of control on your paintbrush, dude. Um... I think you're I think the next technique that you'll want to try and you know branch and master is probably blending crap was that it for that email that was that it man you must have been sending me uh, high-res pictures pictures Ooh, I like this now see I like these uh, really high contrasty kind of tiernids as it gives them really kind of a, a horror kind of feeling can we get a little closer into that no we can't Maybe if I go back to this. Yeah, let's go back to that. Let's keep this for a bit. But very nice. On a photography standpoint, I think you need a little bit more light in the shot just to kind of really show it. But I, I just, I dig the shot anyway. Looks very cool. I mean, the color scheme, you know. Like, you look like you got a really solid handle on layering. Pretty solid on the dry brushing. I still see some stuff like I would, you know, you gotta watch out for. Just kind of like, you know, too much dry brushing or a little too heavily. Not allowing the undercolor to kind of show through and create some transitions for you. But pretty darn good. And if you're, if you're starting up a commission service, well, you know, good for you. Um, you know, I'm sure you'll be doing, you know, doing a lot of uh, local kind of. Uh, commissions. If you're looking to start, you know, your own kind of service and, you know, start working with, um, you know, like, for example, like Mini Wargaming's uh, partner, uh, partnerships with other commission painters to, you know, uh, get stuff done. Um, that's really nice. I like this. You have to let me know how you made this. Did you keep a journal of how you did this? Because I'd like to know, because... I'm sure, I'm almost sure that Matt would really love to have a whole bunch of this stuff. Like a table full of it. But anyway, uh, back to the commission painting. Yeah, being a commission painter, it's a tough gig. You have to really love painting. And you really have to have a really good work aesthetic as far as, you know, getting your, getting jobs done. Working towards a deadline. Ooh, I like this model. I like that green. Oh, he's still a work in progress. Are you brush paint uh, priming as you go kind of thing? That's very interesting. Do you find that you're, as you're painting and working on something that, you know, you're not having your paint rub off or... But I love that tone. I really like that. Nice little details. Uh, dude, like Daniel, I would say that you've got a really great handle on the brush. And 
keep going. Commission painting. Commission painting is, is a tough racket to get into as a lot of painters. And I see a lot of painters. And I see a lot of painters who, you know, who are names out there, you know. A lot of studios and stuff like that too. And, you know, they're, they're undercharging. And a lot of times with commissioned painters, it's kind of this undercutting each other. Everybody's trying to lowball each other because, you know, everybody wants the commissions, right? But the thing is, is like, you know, it's, it's really, it's what level do you want to go? Do you want to just commission paint for just your buddies? Or are you going to commission paint, you know, create a site, you know, because if you, because if you're going to go into the commission painting, then you got to do it right. You got to get the site, you got to get the domain, get your name, create a nice portfolio, which, you know, you have right there. I mean, you, you pretty much sent me a great big portfolio of work, which is, and I mean, I liked it. Uh, your photography, I think, you know, to really kind of show off your work, you got to get a little bit more light on your subject matter so that you can pho photograph it well and that way. And then you might want to edit some of the pictures so that you don't have like your lamps or whatever, uh, or I can see like the edge of the card paper or, you know, stuff like that. You want to edit them so that they're, you know, uniform and just showcase the work. But if that's the level you want to go, it's a lot of work. Get started. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to, and the success is not going to happen overnight either. But, you know, something like Mini Wargaming's uh, painting commission program that we have with other commission painters, you know, the one fellow who did the uh, Imperial Knights for us, you know, he did a fantastic job on those and it drummed up a whole whack ton of business for him. And now he's, he's busy, you know, and that's great. That's great for him. You know, it's great for, for Mini Wargaming and, you know, so it's all good. And, you know, if that's the, if that's the route you're going to take, then, you, you know, you got to really kind of uh, punch up the uh, professionalism. That way it, it instills confidence in the buyer in you so that, you know, they're not going to look at you and go, ah, oh, it seems kind of sketchy. I don't know. Uh, I might get robbed. I might get taken if I send him, you know, uh, $5,000 worth of miniatures to get painted up in over the course of six months, right? That would be a huge amount of money to, you know, to dedicate towards something. But, you know, hey, that's some people out there have, you know, a whack ton of money to to dedicate towards this hobby and that's that's great i mean you know that's really it's a lot of those guys out there who you know who have that kind of resource but they don't have the time to get a painting or they don't have the talent or the confidence or you know what have you and so they go through commission painting service and that's why you get uh companies like blue table painting who have made uh you know made a living off of painting miniatures and you know like and he's as far as I know, he's got that thing down pat as far as, you know, turnaround and uh, level of service. And, you know, so really, if you want to kind of, if you're looking for somebody to emulate as far as commission painting, that's a start, you know. But, uh, like, I've done it myself, commission painting, and, you know, it's not for me. <laughs> I get bored. If I had 500, somebody sent me 500 Space Marines, yeah, I'd probably end up taking my own life. And that's not, that's, I know it's not a funny joke, but that's probably what would happen. Now, watch some smart assholes mail me 500 Space Marines. How are you? You said you're going to do it. <laughs> so let's get back to the comments uh, before, I may, may, before I put my own tool in my mouth. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Holy man, I missed a whole bunch here. Um, Del Grath looks like he's doing a barbecue today or something like that. I don't know. I was, wasn't really paying attention. Uh, Dave G. No, I already read that. Reziel Wargamer X. Yay. First ever live. We OB for me. <laughs> we OB. We OB. W O B. Can't even read. <laughs> Night Lancer, it begins. Eat a good of fresh meat. Eric Coin at Chris. The heater is here. The heater. <laughs> Remember from Dave and the Giant Chaos and Elder campaign? My birthday is on the 13th. Could you lift me as you did with Matt? I live in Norway. <laughs> okay, you know what? Um... <laughs> okay, Eric Coin. I don't know. Are you serious? Like, I, I could lift you because... 
in one of the now apparently it was post the video was posted in one of Dave's bat reps. I haven't seen it, and so I I didn't know if he posted it or not, or if he was going to save it for another kind of you know crazy kind of video. But yeah, uh, I pick up Steve. Now you've seen you got you guys have must have all seen Steve by now. Steve's a tall fella, and he's you know he's got some girth to him. And yeah, I pick him up, and just like I did Matt. Now, Dave didn't think I could do it, but I did it. <laughs> and no, I didn't hurt myself either. But even even Eric, if you're a small or big fella, I'll probably do it. Otherwise, you get a big bear hug or kick in the pants. And when you leave, when you leave, I will say goodbye in the way that's customary. <laughs> Clayton Tate, hey, everybody. Everybody, 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 hey, man, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man, hey, Raziel Wargirex, yes, he's the anti-cooler now, why do you always have, like, yeah, the heater, right, Eric's coin, the heater, is that because your dice are always hot, is that why, because the cooler, he cools your dice, when you play, like, when he plays, Owen's strategy is to roll as few dice as possible because his rolls are so crap. But the thing is, is that when you play against Owen, your dice rolls are crap. And probability is out the window. And so I think Owen is mystically like a vortex of, of negative probabilities. If that's, if that's possible. If that's even a thing. Is that a thing? To, have, to be a, a, a nexus of negative probability, uh, probabilities, because if it's a thing, well, it must be a thing because Owen exists, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so that means that Eric's coin, if you're the heater, then that means you're, you're, you're a, a focal point of positive probabilities. <laughs> now that actually sounds kind of nice, right? I'm a focal point of positive probability. <laughs> I don't know if he sounds like that, but because I mean, like with a name like Eric's coin, yeah, I don't know. Eric's coin. I mean, I, first thing I think of was like a like a uh, like a leprechaun or something. I don't know why. With the little Irish accent. He did. He did. He did. He did. What did they do? <laughs> Tolo, there's my stalker. <laughs> CBC Vlad Tepe, yeah! Mark Hill, what happened to Pony? Don't know, Pony, he comes and goes, but that's okay. You know, he's a young man, he's got a life too. You know, and Saturdays, I mean like, you know, I don't have a life. That's why I'm doing the show on Saturdays. <laughs> and I'm not saying that any of you guys here who are live with me today have no lives. It's probably your day off, you know, or you're heading out to work, or you're at work, I don't know, I don't, and, is not a jab at anybody, but you know, young men, and it's summertime. You know, I I don't expect them to be too conscious. And I mean, he's in Europe, isn't he? I thought he was in Germany or something, something like that. So, you know, I I can always excuse a young fella for being a young fella. You know. It's so when you become an adult and you still are really wishy-washy like that and you can't stick to one thing, that's when I, I have zero tolerance. <laughs> Come on, be a man for God's sakes. <laughs> Michael Lancer, Lancer is a down under. Oh, in down under. The show starts at 2 a.m. for me. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> so... Uh, okay, wait. So you, when you're saying good morning, are you just getting up? Like, do you work the nights or something, or or are you crazy enough? Now I know a lot of Aussies are are pretty pretty crazy, but do you get up for this? Because I I I'd have to say that's that's a bit of a, a bit of an honor, I guess. Um, but if you're just crazy, then you know. Well, then enjoy the show, right? <laughs> Mad cow, crazy, bah, I'm late. No, you're not, because I didn't read that until now, and you probably arrived like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> Ido Gihama, going to Japan. Oh, very cool. Man, I'd love to go to Japan. 
I've always wanted to go to Japan. I've always wanted to um, um, catch, uh, you know, the the uh, taiko drums. I'd love to go see one of those shows, taiko drums. And also, there's a whole bunch of other stuff I'd love to go see, uh, but not the radioactive side. I don't want to go see the radioactive side, but yeah. And isn't there isn't there monkeys who bathe in the, in in frozen water with little springs, hot springs? I'd like to go see those little guys too. Get shots of those little monkeys. Yeah, that's right. I want to get shots of monkeys. You know what I got to do? You know what I should do? I should head over to the Toronto Zoo and uh, head over to the monkey uh, exhibit and get some shots of myself with, with the monkeys. With my shirt on, of course. Might have to do that this summer. Just might have to. Helday and Urbanus. Hola. Olo? Hallo? Hallo. I can't read. Hey, I haven't sent an email in a couple weeks. Don't blame me. <laughs> Hell, I nearly missed the two shows in a row. Yeah, you probably didn't want to get jabbed at, right? So, that's okay. But no, hell, they, uh, we, I mean, we kid, right? But, you know, please, always, always send emails. Feel free to send emails, even. But, you know what, though? Let's, let's, let's make a rule. Let's make a rule. In the title, we'll have uh, not for way of the brush or W-O-T-B or for way of the brush, right? That way we can kind of skim through. That way, you know, because if it's just like a personal email and you just want to, you know, uh, ask a personal question or, you know, something like that, then, you know, that's fine too, right? But, yeah. The Deblet. Hey, Chris. What's up, guys? Hi, Deblet. How day in urbanists? I mean, <laughs> I may need to send Chris a book over the summer to make up for it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Itogihama, we like stuff. We also like things, but we prefer stuff. Stuff's better than things. <laughs> Isn't that, is that a Carlin? George Carlin? Or is that a Nito? <laughs> Raziel, I always work on Saturdays. Finally got one off. He's got some nice work there. Yeah, um... A young fellow, Daniel, or what was that, Drake 09 or Drake 90? I can't remember. Anyway, yeah, it was good work, and you know, lots of luck to you, buddy, because you know, commission painting is it's a t it's a tough racket to get into. Um, you know, I've got a buddy, uh, Tyler. He's uh, he's slap slap dash minis. You know, he's got a commission service, and he hasn't taken any commissions in a while, and you know, he's got to catch up on work, and you know, it's. It's a tough gig because, you know, it's, they're not doing it full time. You got to do it, you know, you can only do it part time. And when you work a tough job, physical job or anything like that, you know, you really don't want to, you don't feel like, you know, painting when you get home. You got to really love to paint. So you have to love it. You have to love it. Not, not like it. You have to love it. And you have to have that good work ethic. Where was I there? I don't know. <laughs> Blake Dawson, good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. <laughs> Della Popo One. Those tunits are fantastic. They were. They were very nice. <laughs> and, okay, so I think we're somewhat caught up. I can see everybody's guys kind of talking about the tunits and everything's cool like that. Yes, the Capillary Towers. I'd like to know too. I'd like to know how he made them. So let's go over to another email. This is from Neck40K. And, uh, oh, you know what? I think this was a response to his previous email, I think. <laughs> anyway, okay. So it was supposed to say Agri and Earth. Yeah, okay. Had oval base, flight stand, bought separately. Okay. When I said so, it's a struggle. I had meant how to do it, so it's a str it's a struggle. It's not a struggle, probably. I don't know. Next Z Z Next Xos Xos. I don't know. Was well, supposed to be Xenos, right? Because I can't even say that. <laughs> I will make battle damage army. Prepare yourself for the wild orc minis. I'll be on tabletop painting for my little brother. He's fine, but he likes the game. Don't be concerned. He doesn't know. Oh, own any, know any fluff, 
And he thinks that the orcs are silly veggies like broccoli <laughs> that are a bunch of fart guns. <laughs> Super mature, I know, from Despicable Me. <laughs> Yours truly in all caps, neck 40 k P.S. Here's some, here's, here are some Imperial Knights chat picks from my Dave at the local hobby store. P.P.S. I also painted these sentinels for my best friend Marshall. They said, made this volcano. Ooh, very nice. Ooh. Ooh, nice and clean. I, I you know what? You guys probably oh, wait, I'm crap, I forgot to switch screens here. <laughs> Sorry. Um yeah, you guys probably disagree with me, but I like when the knights uh, are fairly clean looking. And the co colors are bold. I like when the metals have a lot of, you know, depth to them, but I like when the, you know, the heraldry colors and stuff like that. I like when they're nice and bright and solid and, you know, you got all the imagery on them and stuff like that. I know a lot of you guys are probably, no, 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 they should be all battle damage because they're all, you know, 10,000 years old. And rah, 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 rah. You know what? You can all shut up. <laughs> Very cool. Nice. Holy crap. That is a volcano. It's Mount Doom. Sentinels. Sentinels. Okay, so that was that email. That was Neck Forty K. He was, I, I think that was like kind of like he wrote that as a response to I think his previous email, which is I think like two shows ago when he wrote that. But yeah, Rezio, <laughs> veggie fart guns. Yeah, I know kids, kids in their wild imaginations. Uh, let's go back to the comments, and I don't know where I am because I wasn't paying attention. Reziel, I never understood why they discontinued that stuff. Oh, the Capilli Towers, Forge World. Ah, uh, probably because it doesn't sell. Same, because they used to have, like, those really kick-ass looking kind of, uh, gothic ruins and stuff like that. And they looked really cool, and I liked them. And I was, you know, oftentimes considering picking up a set. But they were so pricey. But they looked so darn cool. I have coffee, but I'm supplementing with chocolate milk. And, yeah, so, you know, I... Why they stopped? I don't know. Because, like, thing like... Like, Forge World, really, like, if they really wanted to, like, kind of just blow people out of the water, they shouldn't be making, like, too much Imperial add-on stuff. Well, like, Imperial Guard stuff, like, you know, with the different variants of tanks, that's very cool, right? The terrain, when they were doing more terrain stuff, like, back in the day, the Imperial Ruins and things like that, yeah, that's all very cool and well and stuff like that, but really... They should be making more Tyranid type stuff. They should be, definitely should be making more Eldar stuff. They definitely need to be making more Tau stuff. Because I think those things would really, really sell. And even like, you know, uh, Chaos Demon World kind of stuff. And Demon, Demonic and, you know what I mean? Yeah. Things like that. Like where they can... Because nobody else can use uh, Games Workshop's IP as well as Forge World. And Forge World is kind of this offshoot of games workshop but they it seems like they have free reign to do whatever they like it seems i don't know maybe you know headquarters tells them they can't do something or you know they shouldn't be making this and concentrate more on this and we want more support towards you know i mean like they might get that, those kind of directives right but you know i don't know because i'm not there i don't work for forge world and i have no idea i have no insight into what's going on with what's going on with them but yeah, if if I could write a letter to Forge, you know, you know what? I'm I'm staying right now because I know somebody from Forge World, or somebody who knows somebody in Forge World, is watching. Make more Eldar terrain, more Tyranid terrain, Tau terrain, Demon terrain. Ooh, Necron terrain. Well, they got some Necron terrain. They got those big Necron things for the uh, Realm of Battle board that you know, like I don't know how many people bought, but. It doesn't seem like everybody snapped those up like they thought that people were going to... I mean, you know, like, they're pretty pricey, but... I don't know, I saw that and I was like, I saw the price and I said, but <laughs> Don't need a table that bad, I'll make a table. My my time isn't that, you know, that valuable. <laughs> uh, where am I? 
Night Lancer. Mold broke down, too expensive to replace, maybe reasons like that. Yeah, but as long as you had the Master and making molds, like the molds that Forge World makes, they're simple, just two part silicone molds. And those are not that difficult to make. It's time consuming, but they probably looked at things like, you know, um, cost, like how much they were selling. And if they weren't selling that many, then yeah, they probably, what the mold broke down and they didn't bother because it wasn't selling. Right. But you know, maybe they would see a spike during, you know, the, you know, the, uh, Tyranid release window, you know, and maybe they should have made those things available. I don't know. Or maybe if they had something cooler, you know, I don't know. Could you imagine like a big Tyranid piece? Where you had like this big mouth coming out of the ground, it looked, or you know, it was just something disgusting, and it looked like, you know, it was breaking out of concrete, or you know, stuff like that, right? I mean, I'm sure Forge World has a lot of great sculptors. I don't know who sculpts for Forge World, but I'm sure somebody out there was like, "I would love to do this Tyranid stuff. I'd love to do this Tyranid stuff, and put me on this project. Let's let's make a million bucks," you know. I don't know. Tolo, anyone else seeing Chris having Godzilla speech? <laughs> what? Anyone else Chris, seeing Chris having Godzilla speech? Dude, I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? You're freaking me out. And Tolo, you got to send me a picture of yourself in the, your, your t-shirt, your Way of the Brush shirt, right now, so I can post it online right now. We can all have a look at you while you're flexing your muscles. Mad cow crazy, I could mail you 500 mantic zombies to paint, and that's just my troops. I, you know, those, those mantic zombies though, that like, that's a steal. Like as far as like everything that mantic is producing, those zombies are the best models for their price and like compatibility with other game systems, of course, right? But yeah, like you, you can't go wrong with that deal from Mantic. Like, I don't know why everybody's not, that, that in fact might be their most popular thing because there's tons of 40k players out there and really a lot of the Mantic stuff, I mean, doesn't really kind of carry over into, you know, the more popular grim dark kind of game and except those zombies because everybody, because when Games Workshop put that Typhus guy out, you know, Typhus, not that Typhus guy, but Typhus and, you know, his plague zombie, uh, you know, apocalypse army. Everybody was snapping those uh, zombies up because they're they're great and they're nice looking models. Like they look good and yeah. But if you sent me five hundred, yeah, I'd probably take my own life. <laughs> Resiel Wargamer X Chris Stashtastic. <laughs> it's mantastic. Eric Goyd, I love Chris's Emperor impression. Last week the brush. <laughs> Ido Gihama, Steve is not a Gretchen. No, he is not. Yeah, Steve was shocked. Yeah, okay, so it, it was posted, right? Well, which which video was it? Because I didn't, I never saw the footage. I just, you know, I mean, I lived it, but I never, I never saw like when Dave was editing the video or anything like that. And so I didn't, I wasn't even sure Dave was going to have that in the video. But I thought maybe he would have saved it for, you know, a silly behind the scenes look at Chris being a jack wagon or something, you know, so... I don't know, but yeah. Um, where am I? <laughs> yeah, Steve was shocked. <laughs> yeah, well, because he, he's a big guy. And, you know, he was kind of shocked that I weigh pretty close to him because I, my, my weight is, I'm fairly heavy. It doesn't seem like it. I know, I know some of you are probably shocked. But, yeah. He's, he's not that heavier, that much heavier than me. And, you know, I was, we, we got into the whole discussion of, you know, um, fat and, and muscle and, you know, muscle being heavier than fat. And so, and I think that's what, what got into the, me picking him up, <laughs> but I have another buddy, uh, Tyler. Um, he, uh, you know, he's a big guy and I've picked him up before and, you know, so I knew I, I knew I could do it. Yeah. It's really kind of dumb because, I mean, I could have lost my balance and then I would have went right into the, all those miniature racks and stuff like that, right? <laughs> so it was really kind of a dumb thing to do, but don't don't try it at home. But execute proper, if you're going to do it, execute proper technique. 
Just don't throw your back out goofing off. That's the worst. Delgrath, I think it's in the narrative video that came out this week. Yeah, but which one? He's we've been releasing like two of those a day, and one goes in the vault, one goes in the, up for uh, for public. Eric Coyne, Steve is a giant. Yeah, he's a big dude. He's 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 pretty, but he's a gentle giant. He's a good guy. <laughs> I could see Chris's knee shaking with effort. It was my right knee because I was trying to get that balance in there. But once I had him up, I had him up. But yeah, it was just initially trying to, you know, lift him up. It was get that initial leverage. Uh, Eric's coin, leave Ottawa. Is this the heater on drugs? Whoa. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Eric's coin, I am an amateur coin magician. Really? Are you really? Are you are, like seriously? Are you a magician? Because if you are, okay, because if you are, Eric, make a YouTube account with your cell phone or with something. Film yourself doing a coin trick. And let me see. Just And send me a link. Because, you know, that'd be cool. Or are you not allowed to? Is it part of the magician code not to film yourself? But I see those guys all the time showing, doing, you know, tricks on TV and stuff. <laughs> Hell, the Interminous, a life. What's that? <laughs> Chris Bannister. I don't think I've ever seen that name before. Adulthood, it sucks. <laughs> Tolo, I got my way to brush t-shirt. Now I'm high off the smell it gives off. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all part of that printing process. It's It's got to be the when it's... Because it's got to shoot that ink onto the shirt, right? As it's printing, running through a printer. And it's... You know, and so I imagine it's probably... it It's probably like a... Um, the heck is it called it's a dry compound that's got to heat up and then it melts and then sets and it, it there's um it's like an emulsion printer and you know i'm wondering if it's, the, if it's if it's that kind of technology i don't know i wasn't there when the shirt was printed so <laughs> night lancer at chris no i stay up late i've been painting all night <laughs> You're crazy, man. You're cra I did that once. I did it once. Uh, staying up late and painting. I was... What was it? Oh, I, I, the first time the Lehman Russ came out. And I just bought it. And I liked it, you know, because it looked like, you know, it rubber, at the time it was reminding me of, like, you know, the old World War One, the early tanks, like that. Like, the Lehman Russ kind of reminded me of that, right? And... I was really excited to get to work on it. So that day, that afternoon, you know, I went and picked the model up and like when it, when it finally got shipped to us and everything like that. And I, you know, bought the model, got home, unwrapped it, started putting it together. You know, I was taking my time, putting it together, gluing it. And I was like, well, I need to paint it. And I didn't have any primer. So I had to go back to town, pick up some primer, come back home, prime it, and then started painting it and then I, I ended up painting it until like six in the morning I was working on this tank and I worked on it from beginning to end you know in the course of a full not 24 hour but you know it was long, it was a long time and I was like looked at the clock and it was six in the morning I was like oh my god <laughs> I've been working on this so long but it's done <laughs> you know that moment when you finish a model and you're just so happy with yourself you're so proud of yourself and you're like it's done it's done i finally got it done all of life's mysteries and problems just disappear in significance to the model being done it's all, it, i've given birth to my dreams it's done <laughs> I don't know where any of that was going, but <laughs> uh, you know what? Like, if I wasn't sitting here talking to a camera and talking to you guys live, I'd be a crazy person sitting here and just kind of reading stuff. And you know, what I mean, like, like if I was sitting here filming this and not doing this live, yeah, I'd look like a crazy person. And, and if I was filming this, like, without, you know, you guys being right there and, you know, I mean, the emails and, like, this kind of live interaction, I don't think this show would have the same kind of, kind of, you know, vibe, right? 
Because otherwise it'd just be me, you know, kind of just talking to the camera and not, you know what I mean? Whereas, whereas because you guys are sitting here live talking away and, you know what I mean? Like, I'm talking to you kind of thing. And it makes me less crazy. That's, it makes me feel less crazy, I should say. It doesn't make me less crazy. <laughs> I'm a little bit off anyway, but... <laughs> Coffee break. Coffee break. Coffee. Oh, oh, oh. Um, Nathan Barraza, getting paid to watch this every weekend. <laughs> yeah, so you, you probably got a job, too, uh, that you're probably sitting there on your cell phone or something, right, watching this. You jump on their Wi-Fi and sit there and watch this on your phone. <laughs> I'm kind of curious, though. What kind of quality does it look like on a phone? Because... Like when I see this on YouTube, like I like it's our connection speed that doesn't allow this to be, you know, as crisp as I would like. Like I could record this, you know, um, and post it and it would be, you know, full 1080p and it'd look great and sound great. But I think really, I mean, you guys more listen to me than you are watching me, right? I mean, I could sit here with, you know, a clown nose on and it'd probably be half an hour before somebody noticed I had a clown nose on. <laughs> or maybe not I don't know <laughs> unless of course it went squeak when I would when I bumped it or something but anyway um Rezia yeah, I want to see pretty much everything in Japan yes I would love to see it. and then an Edo Edo going to Japan that'd be awesome that'd be like you're you're lucky I don't know if uh with a name like Edo Gihama if you're originally from Japan or what but if it's, you know, I don't know. I don't know Ido's story, so <laughs> I can only, you know, uh, assume details. But, yeah, I'd love to go. It'd be fun. Joaquin Ortega, good Saturday, gentle monkeys. <laughs> oh, you know what, guys? Okay, I was, I was actually, I was talking with Dave yesterday. You know, we're, Friday, you know, is kind of, it's a little bit lax around here, but... It's, it's, it's more, it's playtime, right? But we got, we got work done, but we're, you know, relaxing. And so we're talking ideas. And I was telling Dave uh, yesterday that uh, I'd like to do a design for the monkeys, the chat monkeys. And I was also thinking that we should probably do another uh, giveaway soon, too. Uh, I was going to wait until, like, I hit 5,000, uh, 5, but uh, I don't think I, I don't think I, Maybe we'll do one then too, but I was thinking of just doing one for fun anyway, just to, you know, let the hilarity ensue as usual with the internet monkeys and playing with the, <laughs> the document. Basically, let's do this. Let's do a, let's do a giveaway, right? Just for giggles. Let's do a giveaway. And so maybe next, maybe next show, maybe we'll, we'll do next show as a giveaway show. I'll do some, I'll give away something. I don't know. I'll let you guys have some fun, but anyway, um, yeah, I was thinking about doing up a, a design, a shirt design for the monkeys. And, okay, so before anybody else, you know, um, gets any kind of ideas, I've, I've had an idea. I'm not too sure how I'll, you know, compose it all, but here is the main elements of the, sh of the design, okay? And maybe I'll have to design it today because it's got a bit of time today, and I'm filming my response video and stuff like that for uh, Dave's aspiring champion challenge thing and here here's the general idea of the monkey design for the shirt okay it's going to be a monkey it's internet monkey way the brush monkey somebody had sent me a picture of those emperor monkeys with the mustache right and i can't remember who i don't know if it was bad edge or it was it was somebody somebody sent me a picture of one and I thought, you know, I seen a little guy sitting in a tree and he's got this big ass mustache. And I thought that's, that's kind of, you know, a way the brush kind of thing, right? Because Chris, he's got the mustache. It's way the brush. It's monkeys. An emperor monkey. An emperor, right? We all love 40K. We all love, you know, the grim dark and everything like that, right? So an emperor monkey with a big mustache, okay? And then he's holding, you know, like a paintbrush, Right? And he's sitting there. Maybe the paintbrush is resting on his shoulder or, you know, something like that. Kind of, uh, 
kind of Gretchen like, you know, comical like that, but light. Nothing realistic. It would be very, you know, almost cartoon kind of style. And yeah, that's so that's my initial concept, I think. And so I think um I'd like to produce that and have something fun like that available. Unless of course you guys think it's a dumb idea and don't bother. Then I won't. <laughs> Ido Gihama, I've been on the radioactive site. I shift. Ugh. Ugh. You don't hear a funny humming sound, do you, Ido? <laughs> you don't uh, walk by a TV set and it goes, because you might have got a bit of a dose. <laughs> Mark Hill, I'm going on holiday on the 25th of this month. Okay. Have a good time. <laughs> or is the 25th like a uh, way of the brush day? Is, is that is that why you're telling me? Mark, am I supposed to mark it in my calendar that you're going on holiday on the 25th? I don't... What are you, what are you trying to tell me? I don't know. <laughs> night Lancer. No, I'm a night person anyway. More productive at this time of day. Yeah, I used to be kind of that way too when I was young. And sometimes nowadays. Get ideas at night and, you know. You listen because the night's quiet, and so all your your brain can actually start to process other th- sensory things. You start thinking about things, and yeah, I think that might have something to do with it. Or, or you're a psychic, and the collective psychic energy around you is died down, and so you can absorb the energy and be more productive. You're a psychic. Jeez, man, you're a psychic? Night Lancer, you're a psychic? What am I thinking? <laughs> Raziel Wargamer. Use the monkeys for reference and paint a joker roll for a quick tip. That's actually a good idea. Do they sell joker rolls on their own? I don't know. If they do, I'll pick one up. If they don't, I'll pick one up. If they still make them, I'll pick one up. <laughs> Eric's calling Naughty Chris. Why? What did I do? What did I do? Other than just the tip. <laughs> Resia Wargamer, read an email. You're way behind it. Well, okay, fine. Okay, yes, Mom. Here, let's go with an email. <laughs> this is from Delgrath. Hey, Chris. This week, I challenged myself to paint a motto from beginning to end during the show only. Ooh, interesting. This is what I was able to get done. I will eventually be going through and retouching the motto, but I am proud of what I was able to do in the amount of time. Thank you for the feedback, and you are absolutely correct. A good base coat is essential and simple. Yes. On last, on last week's Terminator, there is Blood on a Sword, Tabard, and Crown. This was... Gifted to the model after defeating a Ravager in close combat. Oh, cool. You know, we used to do that too back in the day. We used to do like, you know, uh, there was one time we had this piece of terrain that we always played on. And one time I uh, blasted a guy with like, I don't know, I can't remember. It was like a whole bunch of people. And like, we just blasted him into, he was hiding in a corner. It was like kind of like a last man standing. And we, and it was like 10 guys shooting into it. And so we put a big blood splat where the guy died because... It was so hilarious that it was the one man left. And Anyway. <laughs> I will keep sending in photos as I complete more of the army. Once the Plague Marines are finished up later this week, I will send an in-progress shot of the army. Hopefully both emails will make the show. Gotta go take care of my brushes before monkeys run off with them. Delgrath. And so here, ooh, here's another angle. Wow, you got actually quite a bit done. And you know what? Like, when you're working fairly quickly, um, like, if you're going to do quick, quick work, okay, I'll, I'll give you guys a little hint. And you're, and drying, like, the dry time is not an issue. Oh, let's come out a bit here. Here we go. And drying is not an issue. Use... Uh, either like oil paints or acrylics with slow dry retardants to paint because you can get all sorts of color blends done really quickly. Color blending 
with like two brushes or even just one brush and just kind of mixing the colors together is really really fast and i've shown it many times i know you guys you know know i've shown it many times but it, it is quite quick and if you're just sitting there painting away while i'm sitting here blathering on you would probably get quite a bit done especially if you were you know using something like oil paints or slow dry retardants and things like that now there's some things you know you got to be careful when you're you know like painting an entire model that's wet you know you can't touch it so you need a handle you know you need something you know so that you're never touching any part of the model because obviously the paint would wear off as it, it would still be wet while you're working on it but whoa why did that zoom in oh because i scrolled that <laughs> What is he doing with that big finger? Why did they give him that big finger like that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Where am I? Dave Patelli, good morning, afternoon, evening. I overslept and it was glorious. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, hey, some days you just got to sleep in. Some days, like, you know, Saturdays, I mean, it's, it's kind of my sleep. Well, actually, Sunday's my sleep in day, but Saturdays, yeah, I'm usually up. But some days I don't get up till before I'm ready to come into the office here and get started for this. And, yeah, that's why sometimes I look kind of a mess. <laughs> Like today, I was kind of, I didn't, I didn't quite get my hair the way I like, and it was all wet and everything, and I didn't get, uh, I didn't get the wife put a braid in my hair or anything like that. I was going to get it because my hair was wet when I left the house, but anyway, anyway, um, let's do another email. Let's do another email. This is from Belly Fluff. Belly Fluff's Necrons. Oh, Belly Fluff. Yeah, Belly Fluff is in the Clash of Clans clan. Clash of Clans clan? Clash of Clan. Clan. <laughs> Hi, Chris. As we were just chatting about on COC, because you could say that abbreviation a different way. <laughs> These are some of the Necrons I bought last week, and I'm trying to get painted up. Just a base coat of Lead Belcher, Tamiya Smoke Wash, then some basic but way over the top OSL. Yeah, it's a bit much, but it's my first attempt, and I like it. Any comments are welcome. Kind regards, Stephen. And so here's the picture of his work he had sent me, and I liked it. I dug it, you know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really really hung up on on uh osl and things like that but you know uh at the time i had recommended you know um leaving the arms off and o and just create a bit of osl in the areas and then glue the guns into place and then create your osl again like for the guns or you can paint the gun separately and paint that separately and then put them together and you're done right but essentially that was the intention of where we were going but i liked it you know and it's, it, it, the way he described it i mean it's relatively simple to get to this kind of standard they look nice and shiny they got some color depth to them you know like it seems really easy to work with you know metallics in necrons in general right it seems relatively easy to just kind of you know spray them black slap some uh, metallic paint on them and you know you're done but <clears throat> to do something like that you know right is a challenge and i mean like the way he's got them laid out i mean like the picture is you know not the sharpest you know what can i zoom in on this let me zoom in on this there we go <laughs> no see it's really fuzzy but i like this angle here you see you get some color depth in there He's also got some light browns in here, so I wonder if he was doing rust or if that's just like he was just laying it down really quick and just kind of laying his mud down. But either way, it looked kind of like a rust in there, and it looks really good. Might be the lighting too, but he's got the OSL, so I can only assume, you know, he's taking his time and he's enjoying his painting, his his efforts. But uh, 
Yeah. I liked it. It was good. Right? And, uh, yeah. You know what? Here's another quick one. Some more Necrons. Just so we can stay with the Necron team here. This is from Jarl. Or Jim. <laughs> hey, Chris. Just a couple of of my new ghost arc first attempt color scheme so easy on me Jarl he's also part of our Clash Clan 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 and again I, I really like this I really liked this marbling on the uh, green oh wait crap I gotta zoom out here a bit sorry I really like the marbling on the green I like the little power source he's got going on there this is really good I like this and the color scheme is really good I like the color scheme. He's got this, you know, coppery gold uh, metal accents all over the place. He's got this nice warm green. And then he's got these bright silver bits all over the place. I like it. I dig it. It's awesome. Little neck runs. Looks like a roller coaster ride. You know, the one you stand up in and it goes all over the place. That's what this looks like. <laughs> it's like they're going to Cedar Point or something. <laughs> like with all of them, you should model anybody out there who's crazy enough to do it. Model all the Necrons, but model one of them with his arms straight up in the air. <laughs> I I don't I realize that sounds kind of absurd, right? It's like what why would why would one Necron be like, Woo! <laughs> You know what? They, no, no. I'll, I'll tell you why you'd do it. Because they ruin the fluff of Necrons. I don't like Necrons who are silly in the head and with these kind of weird ass kind of personalities. I don't, I don't care for that. I don't buy it. I don't jive with it. I don't dig it. And I'm certainly not down with it. And, you know, they should have kept them cold and mysterious as they are truly you know a nemesis within the 40k universe because there's no stopping the necrons they're they're they're, they're anti-life right you have on one end tyranids who are nothing but life consuming all life and then you have another one that's no uh, the undead or are unlife and they're seeking to destroy all life and so what happens when those two forces collide? Because, I mean, like, real technically, like, realistically, if you're, you know, to explore the whole dynamics of, you know, the 40K universe, you know, in the year, uh, you know, post 40K, which, you know, like, say, a million, two million years later after, you know, the Imperium Man, there wouldn't be much left in the galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy, right? There it would only be, you know, probably the Necrons and the Tyranids. And that's it. And who would win in that in that clash? I think Necrons would win. I think Necrons would win. Because Necrons are not psychic. And they have faster than light travel. They have abundant energy sources. They have these crazy star gods that they can call upon. And, you know, Tyranids need to cons keep constantly consuming fresh material so that they can continue to build. Whereas Necrons need none of that. And so all it is is just, it's just like, it's like a bug zapper. They're just constantly sitting there and bzz, bug, bzz, bug, bzz, bug, you know what I mean? And you do that a couple hundred million times and eventually they're all gone. <laughs> Right, so you know, and Necrons like, but and that's in the old way, in the old fluff where they like they're they're cold and and um, patient and you know eternal, and it's scary. It was it was scary back in the day, that kind of crap, right? Because because it's frightening. <laughs> um, let's get back to the comments. The comments. Where am I in the comments? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That almost sounds like, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. 
Holy crap, how far back am I going here? Oh, jeez. Okay, I'm, I'm probably going to miss some comments here, kids, but... I don't know. Let's say... I'm going to start with Jesse jumping in here. Hi, Jesse. Jesse Gorilla? Gorilla. Gorilla? Mab75? Since you seem to like knights, I just sent you a few pics for feedback, Chris, and good morning. Well, good morning, Mab. Um, Dave Battaglia, when I was visiting Mini Wargaming, Dave was teasing his wife. We saw some random guy walking down the street, and Dave said, hey, there's Jesse. I don't get it. Um, Graham Collin, I can make money disappear. <laughs> You're a magician. <laughs> Painting lackey. I'm a magician too. Give me $100 and I'll make it disappear. <laughs> Just 100 Graham Collins, the Lehman Russ is loosely reminiscent of the World War II M3 Grant Lee. Yeah. But there was also another one I thought that was uh, pre-World War II. It was like post or World War One. It was the early World War One, where it had the single track. It had... It had the sponsons on the side, and I thought it had like a, t a small turret on top and a and a gun in its in its hull, and it's it, it, but it had this long R shape to it, and yeah, something like that. I don't know. I can't remember. Ah, <laughs> Tolo. I think I have leg. Well, reset, reset, or get a better connection. Ito, Chris builds, Lehman Russ, and paints it, calls it birth of his dreams, Herco Chris is the Emperor. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know where that's going, Ito, but okay. Um, <laughs> Red Night Lancer, it's done, reminds me of Red Alert 2, Red Alert 2, is it done, Yuri? No, comrade, Premier, it's only just begun. <laughs> Wilder, if you all, or foo all, foo all or f you all, I don't know. I am painting Esco League. I have three hour to base thousand p fun fun gur. Whoa, what? <laughs> I I I don't get it. Graham Collin, we call them lemon rus rusks. Lemon rusk. I don't. Again, it, it's got to be that, that English humor. I don't know what... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Eric's Coyne, you are, Chris. That's why we love you. Oh, crazy. Yes, must be. <laughs> Believe to tell you, Mini Wargame shuffling down the street with his shopping cart taken in. Talking to invisible people, kind of six cents-ish, but in a crazy mustache-filled way. <laughs> Raziel, it's pretty good on my Galaxy S. Yeah, see, so I, if you're at work, I didn't think you were sitting on a computer at work, right, watching this. I figured you are probably on your phone. Every, all the kids are on their phones these days. The kids and your, your rock and roll music, your internets, your interwebs. Graham Collin, what Chris doesn't realize is that he really is a crazy person, and we don't exist but are merely figments of his deranged imagination. <laughs> I considered that possibility. I considered it. But one day, I w my internet was out at my house, and I still got an email. Not that I could check it at the time, but it, it came during. Not that I was sitting on a blank screen, and all of a sudden an email popped up. <laughs> that, that would be creepy and scary. But no. That's how I knew this was not all in my head. Haldane and Urbanus at Chris. Serious question. Just got brush soap yesterday. Not masters, couldn't find. But Da Vince seemed to make my brushes, my detail brushes, splay more. Well, yeah, Da Vince. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure with that one. Because I've only ever used masters. I mean, it's it, unfortunately, it's kind of one of those things that once you hit upon, it's kind of like painting, right? You hit one thing and you kind of stick with it. 
but I don't know if if it came in you know like a little tub like this uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna have to look up what it is so I can kind of hypothesize but like with um, with this stuff I wash my brush right run my like dip my brush in water wash put it in my hand get it nice and lathered up because I just build up a, a, a quick little lather in here I don't wash entirely in this I wash in here on my hand sorry excuse me and then I rinse the brush off then after I've rinsed the brush off because this is also a conditioner I run the brush a couple times like once or twice through the soap while it's kind of damp with the water and then very carefully with my fingers draw the bristles back to a point leave the brush on its side to dry and then I put it back in its cup with the bristles up and if need be if it's one of my detail brushes then I put the plastic cap back on <sighs> that just conditions the brushes and trains them into you know staying in a nice fine point um, now I don't know with that Da Vinci soap if that is it Da Vinci or is it like Da Vinci I don't know but anyway um because it could essentially be the same kind of soap just a different brand name and yeah so even with this master stuff I don't I often don't just simply wash the brush in the soap rinse it set it down to dry and then you know leave it I often condition the brush after I've washed it so that it stays in the points and then so when I put it in its cup in its place and you know like, yeah so like for a lot of you guys like this is how my my paint cup always looks and you can see there's a few of my brushes right now yeah this one here this one's one of my uh, blending brushes and it's I mean it's kind of hard to see here uh, let me find some place dark you can kind of see it doesn't come to a point oh it's got soap on it Blech. or it tastes like the soap anyway this is actually a bad habit I don't like like I've been trying to get myself out of this habit but yeah the bristles are kind of buggered on this anyway because I've been blending a lot with this brush but you can see now see yeah see how it's coming to a point again but a lot of my brushes like see here's here's one and you can see how the bristles come right to a point and it's been just been sitting here and this is a wash brush washed it conditioned the bristles you know here's another one this is a standard brush and I'm just silhouetting it against the dark of my hair so you guys can kind of see it hopefully but anyway and that's all I do for conditioning my brushes um, you know like I said I, I, I wash them lather them rinse them and then condition I just run them once or twice through the soap draw the bristles nicely not you know not with a lot of force but also kind of trying to um, uh, wring a bit of the excess water and moisture and soap out of the bristles but just kind of you know just drawing it to a point leave it on its side to dry and then I put it in my cup where it stays till till needed so uh, but yeah I mean brush care it, it doesn't have to be a chore it's just got to be you just kind of have to make it part of your your painting routine and yeah so um, who's that Heldane Heldane I'm not sure I've never used Da Vinci, da Vinci or Da Vinci I don't know if you just typed an E or instead of an I but anyway um, I'm not familiar with that product I'll have to check it out if, it, if I can find it in North America um, I'm not sure because I know like somebody else had at one point uh, told me about Da Vinci brushes that's why it got me thinking it was Da Vinci because there's Da Vinci brand brushes and apparently they're really good and they're made with uh, Red Sable Red Sable yeah I think it's Red Sable and yeah I've been meaning to order myself some and you know give them a shot because there's also Raphael's you know because I'm I use either Citadel or Windsor Newton's and some grunt work I use the army painter brushes not a huge fan of the army painter brushes but they for most jobs they do the trick and I, you know I always poo poo on synthetics but I do use my synthetics as well I don't know how we got onto the, that stuff but I was just babbling yeah so but that's that's my routine uh, Haldane I don't know um, if that helps at all but um, 
that's you know I mean without knowing that product very well um, yeah I couldn't say why your bristles were still splaying out other than you know but I mean like like I showed you there I mean like I, t I could taste the soap on the bristles and still the hair is splayed out but it's it's one of my brushes that I'm kind of rough with and I'm, I'm not you know, I'm not overly concerned with keeping the point. Although, like you see my wash brush, my wash brush still comes to a fine point. But then with my washes, I still am quite controlling as far as um, how I'm laying it out on a model. So, uh, yeah. Maybe more details, Heldane. Maybe write me a paper on um, your process of going through uh, washing your brush. <laughs> just teasing hell dude I, I hope that helps dude I don't know <laughs> hell dude's gonna stop watching the show because I'm gonna keep ripping on him <laughs> Blake Dawson he's not wearing clown nose he's not wearing clown nose <laughs> Rezia Wargamer I want more help with brushes myself well you got to ask me specific questions. I mean, like, you know, you want help with brushes. Okay, well, what, what like, what's troubling you? What's, tr <laughs> that one sounds rather priestly. What's troubling you, my son? <laughs> I don't know where any of that's going. <laughs> Mab75, spent a month in China to meet my wife's family. Layover in Japan was beautiful, and China was just insane. So much to take in. China's another one, but the big cities uh, are kind of a turnoff for me for China. Uh, China, like the landscape and, you know, like some of those areas in there just look beautiful. But the cities, all that, like that heavy, dense smog, like I've seen like shots of like Beijing and stuff like that. And it's like, oh my God, how can anybody live like this? Like, it's just brutal. Like, it, that's, that's not healthy. That's, you know, and then, then you wonder why, you know, like all these things happen. It's, oh my God, it's. No, but China, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. There's lots of places in, the, in you know, East Asia I'd love to see, you know, well, except North Korea. Not particularly excited with going to North Korea or anything like that, but although South, uh, South Korea would be kind of fun, but yeah. No, Japan, Japan's my, Japan is kind of the thing, you know. Um, uh, I'd love to go see, you know, um, the Emperor's Palace and, you know, some of these old samurai joints and, you know, uh, yeah, I have, I have a bit more of a, uh, a love of the Japanese design aesthetic, uh, the simplicity. Uh, I'm, I'm a very simplistic kind of cat and, uh, you know, Japanese design aesthetic, like in art and everything like that is very simplistic and I like that. I like very simple, bold use of color. Ido Gihama, been going to Japan for almost 10 years. Well, it's 10 years in December. Stopped being a tourist quite some time ago. <laughs> Danish artist. Woo. What is the topic of today's show? Pfft, no topic. Emails. Life in general. Tackling the mysteries of the universe. <laughs> Joaquin Ortega giveaway for the 50th Way the Brush oh you know what oh that's an excellent idea uh, Joaquin that's an excellent idea you know what okay we'll do it for the 50th show we'll do a giveaway yeah good call what's what's this show 48 <laughs> I don't even know <laughs> whose show is this you dumbass yeah it's 48 okay so next week's show no giveaway but the fiftieth show, yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna do, and you know what? Okay, so that'll be two weeks away. Okay, so two weeks away, be the fiftieth show. I think I'm gonna be available. Crap, am I gonna be available? Where's my calendar? Crap, I don't even know if I'm gonna be available because my mother will be in town soon enough, and we are going on a bit of a road trip. 
which I'll take, you know, photos. I don't know if I'll take a video of it, though. But we're heading up seeing family up north and, you know, everything like that. And, you know, it'll be fun. It's a cultural thing, right? You know. Um, so what's today? Today's the 5th. And so the 50th show will be on the 19th. And we will. Yeah. Because I don't have anything on the 19th. So the 19th. The 50th show, we'll do a giveaway. We'll have some fun. We probably will, will run longer than two hours that show, so I'll make sure I have uh, set some time aside, make sure that, you know, got nothing else planned, hopefully. And, yeah, it, it'll be fun. We'll have some fun. We'll have some laughs. We'll have to have some giveaways. Well, man, now, see, now I need more than one thing to give away if we're going to do a longer show like that, right? Oh, what could we do? Because I was thinking of giving away. Because I, you know, I've been talking about it for a while, right? Giving away. Uh, I've been hanging on to these for a bit. Um, these heavy metal master uh, paint sets, or the brush sets. They come with the two little things of medium. Come in a little metal tin, but the metal tin has got lots of space for more brushes. And I really like these little brushes that come in the set. But I got two of those. Two of those. I was initially going to give them away when I hit the 5,000. That's why I've been hanging on to them. But I'm just thinking, well, maybe I'll give one away. And give away maybe a couple DVDs. I don't know. I don't know. What's some other ideas? What's another thing I could give away? I mean, DVDs are fine, right? Because, I mean, like, you know, I can pick, like, three or four people, give DVDs away. And, you know, we can have some laughs. Because I'm still hanging on to some classic ones. Could maybe give away some newer ones, too. Excuse me. Especially for those of you guys who watch me but you know don't aren't really aware of the amount of work I've done for Mini Wargaming's vault which is packed full of tutorials on painting <clears throat> but yeah um yeah maybe we'll do that 50 good good call walking uh you get a cookie sorry i don't have any cookies <laughs> Ido Gihama pork Okay <laughs> Bacon Oh no we're starting with the bacon and pork and stuff Painting Lanky you should have an internet monkey t-shirt I should I, sh I should have an internet monkey t-shirt And that's what I was talking about earlier You know emperor monkey paintbrush So I probably have to design it fast Before somebody else snaps up the idea on me And you know Yeah <laughs> Ido Gihama, yeah, China is crazy. Have a friend on Hong Kong, so I invade there every year on the way to from Japan for a few days. Then usually madness ends. Or happens, madness ends. Well, madness happens. Can't even read. <laughs> Graham Collin, best idea at Joaquin. Yeah, that's a great idea, Joaquin. Excellent idea. See? Good ideas. Good ideas. See? Weigh the brush. It's not just a place of inf information, but great ideas. <laughs> that sounds like complete crap, man. Right? <laughs> Jonathan Joseph. Looks good to me, Chris. Okay. I'm glad you approve. Resio Wargamer, Red Feast, Fang Bang Monkai. <laughs> red Feast, Red and Fang Bang. Like evil scary monkeys? I don't know if you want evil scary monkeys. I think mischievous is more appropriate for when all you bad children get involved on these draws and giveaways <laughs> a bunch of bad kids um dum 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 tolo wait till chris realizes he's only two emails in with seven minutes on the top of the hour <laughs> oh crap did you write that a while ago too holy crap i am i'm way behind okay you know what Enough jibber jabber. Yay, guys, quit talking to me on this chat here. Jeez, let's get to an email. Come on, that's what we're here for, right? Answering questions and learning stuff, not goofing around. This is from Dalgrath. Hey, Chris, here's an update on my previous email that we just covered. <laughs> I got a shot of all my models I currently have. One of, one of what is done and another of what is left. I always get the most work done during your shows on the weekend. Got quite a bit of work ahead of me, but hopefully 
I can have it done in a couple more weeks. Take care, Dahlgreth. So let's have a look at his models, his army, in all its glory. Very cool. Are you gonna, I'm going to assume you're going to chaos up this, um, this Bastion and your uh, Aegis line. See, play, being a Chaos player or an Orc player, right? You can get this stuff and then just kind of slap a bunch of spikes and heads and, you know, have some blood dripping down the side or whatever, and it's all chaos up, right? Orcs, you know, you can slap panels and, you know, some big goth head or something like that on it, and, you know, it's orked up. But Eldar can't do that. Tyranids can't really do that. Who else is there? Dark Eldar. Although, you like, like a siege mentality, like, you know, buildings and defense like that, that really doesn't feel like... Dark Eldar kind of way of war, right? Like, why would they be hiding in a building other than just to jump out and ambush you? Like, you know, it's like the beginning of the story, not during the story, you know? Anyway, man, you got a lot of stuff here to paint. Are those Ravenwing? I'm confused. Oh, because these are the uh, Dark Vengeance box set. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, it's all, it's all clear now to me, man. I've got it. I've got it. I'm okay now. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I think we shown these off, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> I got a short memory span, dude. Don't worry. <laughs> What's this thing? What's this big crazy thing? Oh, is that the Defiler's arm in something? Is this a conversion? Or do I not know what that model is? I'm confused. What is it? What is it? What is that? Zeneman. Zeneman! Yeah, it's, it's got to be the father. You, you made some bits. You made you made something fun. Because it looks like an Imperial Probe Droid or something, right? From Star Wars. But, yeah. So that's Dalgrath's army in all its glory. Very cool. Keep going. Keep sending updates. Keep sending progress reports of what you're working on. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going back to this... Uh, chat must be getting near the end of the show because I can't talk anymore Dave Patelia, hey I sent the picture of the Emperor Tamarin Monkey well I told you I couldn't remember who sent it to me jeez you know I, old Chris has you know got a short memory span and you know he gets a lot of emails and he's trying to catch up but you know that's why we have computers to keep track of stuff for us so that we don't have to keep track of it in our heads but yeah, okay, it was Dave. Dave sent me the picture of the Emperor Monkey. And I liked, I liked, the, immediately when I saw that little picture of it, the idea jumped into my head like, this, this is the monkey that should be, you know, the way of the brush monkey, the internet monkey. This is, this is it. This is the look. I don't know. <laughs> Dave would tell you, should the shirt, should the shirts be sleeveless? Um, I don't know. <laughs> or should they have extra long sleeves so you can tie them in the back? <laughs> Reziel Wargamer, yeah, listen to mom and read another email. By now you're behind again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember David. I don't remember the Fonz wearing sleeveless shirts. I thought he always wore a white t-shirt. Yeah, he always wore a white t-shirt. Painting like you should have the monkey holding the paintbrush, or have him airbrushing. Uh, no, I think airbrushing sounds too complex for uh, uh, a way of the brush monkey. It's more of a paintbrush, right? Because way of the brush. I mean, when you think way of the brush, you don't think way of the airbrush. You think way of a paintbrush, right? And, you know, a lot of people, you know, believe that, you know, the, the, your brushwork, because painting, like painting, like drawing starts at your shoulder for the most part for canvas work and things like that. It doesn't really quite apply to miniature painting, but yet when you dry brush, it does, you dry brush from your shoulder and yeah, so it, it, it would often be, you know, um, it would mirror your sword technique, right? And so that's, that's, that's kind of why I went with way of the brush because, you know, it's like way of the sword. It's, you know, it's this whole, you know, 
Japanese aesthetic kind of thing, right? So I do have an affinity for Japanese aesthetic, but anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm going to jump ahead again of this uh, chat comment thing here. Oh, Codex Dan's here. Oh, Dan, 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 Dan the man. Great <laughs> date. Dan has orc fever. <laughs> is, is orc fever anything like like jungle fever or <laughs> I don't know where I was going with any of that <laughs> wicked case of jungle fever anyway cannibal tyranny Jim White hey guys everybody's here King Luke 2222 hey Chris I've been away for a few weeks what's new um not a whole lot. Been painting, you know, getting stuff done for the vault. Um, anybody who's kind of curious, uh, what I'm currently going to be working on for the quick tips for the vault, uh, I'm got a whole bunch of demons, chaos demons, and <laughs> duh, and uh, yeah, I'm going through each of the like the four gods and showing kind of easy alternate and different kind of ways of painting the flesh because there was a question a while back on painting demon skin tones you know and it, the question wasn't really specific as to what area so right now yeah so that's going to consume up a little bit of chris's time just to get all those videos but yeah everybody in the vault you're going to get a wicked rush of demon flesh tones and i'm going to run through the like basically run through the gambit of not too many, but there's going to be a few of, um, you know, like typical way of painting it to alternate way of painting it to completely different way of painting it to, you know, I would like to do a fourth. I'd like to have every God, every God, but, uh, well, I'm going to do every God cause I've got I'm working, currently working on blood letters. Then I'll probably do plague demons. Then I'll do slanesh demons and then zinch demons and. Yeah, so that's really kind of what's new, King Luke. And man, it doesn't take long for that chocolate milk kind of warm up. Bah, 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 bah. Where am I in the comments? I don't know. Ultimate Res, Sean's here. Douglas Morissette, better late than never. <laughs> And better, er, no, I had nothing there. I was going to, I was going to try and drop some wisdom, some two cent wisdom on you, but I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything. Ultimate res. Tastes like soap. Continues licking it. What does this do? <laughs> what <is> up, Chris? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What does, what does that tell us about Chris? That he is, uh, tastes like, tastes like yuck. Keeps looking at. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's jump to another email, and this one is from Delgreth. He had just wanted to continue. He forgot to pick. So, Dark Angels. I don't. I'm, not, I'm still not sure why these Dark Angels. Oh right, yeah, Dark Vengeance. Right. See, short memory. I told you guys, short memory. <laughs> You guys gonna watch me fuddle around with my? Here we go, Joaquin Ortega. He's got us. He's he's got us an email. He's got us an email. And and you know what? Since Joaquin had such a great idea, this email I know is gonna be fantastic. Watch this. Hello, Chris. <laughs> first, I would like to say thanks for getting my name right on the first try. For being the name butcher, I was impressed. No one gets my name right. Well, it's Joaquin. It's it's uh, like Joaquin Phoenix, right? The actor. It's, it's spelled the same, right? So, and everybody says it's Joaquin, and you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with any of that. Anyhow, I thought it, I would take the time to email you a few projects I've been working on. Also, if you would like, if you wouldn't mind, please giving me some advice on how to improve my painting and bringing it up to a better level. These are all pretty much at the beginning stages of painting. First. If a plague claw catapult 
warp lightning cannon for a friend of mine. I am magnetizing it so he can switch between the two. Oof, that sounds like a challenge. Second is the beginning of my Kador army. I am just getting into War Machine and started painting the Man of War shock troops from the starter set. Very cool. Could you please tell me how to get more detail out of the black, out of the black areas on the suits? Okay. Third is the lore master of Hoeth. Hoeth? See, I never know how to say that one. Hoeth? Because it's Hoeth. Hoeth. Hoeth? Anyway. <laughs> For my high elf army, my color scheme is a red and gold, mainly because I've got a lot of red paints and I don't like the whole blue-white color scheme. Any advice would be greatly appreciated, and thanks for your time. Well, Joaquin. Wow, these are really nice. Nice smooth color. I was going to say, well, Joaquin, it's kind of your time too, but anyway. Um, yeah, the red looks good. Nice and clean. You know? Darn. I mean, I'm going to assume you are priming them black, and then you're trying to build that color back up. I can see a little bit of mold lines, but I, the privateer press resins, and they say it's plastic. Okay, sorry. It's okay. The privateer plastics are, um, they're, they're a pain to clean sometimes. I know, but you got to kind of work at it. And the thing is, is like when you clean like mold lines and stuff like that, it's like, it's like fibrous and stringy. Like you see these little fibers coming off and it's really kind of weird. But anyway, <laughs> um, very good. I dig it. I like it. The red here is nice and solid, you know, despite probably having to lay out probably about 20 coats. And so you want to know how to get a little bit more detail out of the black on these areas. Well, Joaquin, I'm not sure at what comfort level you are at your, um, your, like, you know, your freehanding, like, uh, details because like, okay, like these guys, you know, they're kind of an elite dude. Right. And have you thought maybe like doing like scroll work or, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like the little vine patterns, you know, running through the areas, like drawing like a detail in through there and then, you know, shad shading it. And now I, like I said, I don't know how comfortable you are with a lot of, you know, uh, techniques and stuff like that. So, but I mean like how clean these guys look, I can only, and like how smooth the color, like, appears i can only assume that you're pretty comfortable with painting and so you know i mean like the color scheme i like the color scheme the color scheme is nice and bold um yeah as far as like getting detail out of the red or out of the black you know that's kind of tough because i mean like the models themselves don't have you know a lot of of detail right and you know, so it's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of, you know, just, you know, either you just highlight it and leave it or, you know, cause like, for example, if you want it to stay nice and black, right. And you're going to start throwing highlights in and then you're only going to do very minimal amount of highlighting, right. You're only going to come up with like little grays or like a little bit of turquoise or, you know, bone or whatever color you prefer to highlight black with. And, you know, you're going to create these little subtle little highlights and leave this, you know, the area predominantly black. And that's fine. You could, you know, create little details in there. Or you can create battle damage. And that's another one. Battle damage. Since these guys are elite and they're frontline kind of guys, maybe these guys shouldn't be all pristine looking. Maybe they should be all hardened and battle damaged up. And I have a few videos in the vault on battle damage. I don't know if you're a vault member, Joaquin, but... Uh, yeah, you know, there's some easy ways to just kind of create just two, like a little two color kind of battle damage. It's just essentially it's just the sponge technique in just, um, you know, applying damage here and there. Just like very minimal amounts of damage. I'm talking like a minimal amount of chipping and things like that. But that's another way to throw a little bit of detail in there. Very nice. I dig it. <laughs> catapult very cool 
Now, is that one flat color on that? Because if so, you might want to throw a wash just to help pick out the detail, the wood, to really bring it out. Wood's a really easy one to work with sometimes because all you got to do is throw your base color down, throw that wash on it, let the wash reside within the details, and then give it a quick dry brush of like a really, really light brown or a khaki color and just kind of bring out the wood fibers and just, you know, bring it all out. Oh, was that it? Oh, I thought there was more. Guess not. But anyway, that was Joaquin's email. So hopefully, uh, did I answer your questions? I think I did, didn't I? Um, yeah, so like I, like I said, uh, Joaquin, I'm not sure exactly what kind of, like, what your comfort level is with painting, like what kind of level you consider yourself at. Um, judging from what I can see there, like, it looks like you got a pretty good handle on laying some smooth base coating down. And once you're comfortable with, like, laying smooth base coats down and you're getting really confident at it and things like that, Man, you're you you are ready to start tackling some other stuff like, you know, glaze transitioning, uh, blending, two brush blending, wet blending. You know, um, you're ready to take on all that kind of stuff. Once you once you are a master of your pigments, then you are really you know uh, ready to move forward with stuff. Um, but yeah. As, as far as like from what I've seen though like you know for those man of wars if you're not very comfortable with your highlighting well then you know yeah then maybe that's maybe it's time to start you know just kind of working on you know where to start placing highlights maybe that's maybe that's where it's troubling you right what kind of highlighting scheme right because there's so many different ways to highlight a model right the the fla the fad of the time right now is you know the zenithal style highlighting and, you know, you got edge highlighting, you got zenithal edge highlighting, you have, you know, uh, there's, there's a bazillion different ways you can highlight the model. And it's really just what, you know, what kind of comfort level you're at. But, yeah. I see Night Lancer had to go. See you later, Night Lancer, in case you're watching this later on. See you later, dude. Have a good night. <laughs> or morning. <laughs> Whichever it is for you. <laughs> Because I think he said he was in Australia, so yeah. Joaquin Ortega at Chris, thanks. I didn't even think of battle damage and scroll work. Yeah, so yeah, if you want to, like, you know, like for those black areas on those guys, it, it really, you know, depends on, like, you know, what you're comfortable with and, you know, what, what you want, what kind of feeling you want to go for. Because, you know, like, the scroll work would initially uh, lead you you to believe that they're elite, that, the, you know, they're they're royalty, right? But Kador, you know, they're more like, uh, you know, Soviet Russia, right? So they're, they're more like everything's kind of working class. And I think battle damage would actually kind of make a little bit more sense for them rather than scroll work, right? They wouldn't really get that fancy, although they do have kings and queens and emperors and, you know, stuff like that, right? But I think battle damage might be more the way to go and that way it kind of breaks up that surface too. Um, but with the battle damage, don't go overboard. You know, it's very easy. Even if you want to look really, really dinged up, keep it to a minimum. Keep it to a minimum. Don't overdo the battle damage. Because oftentimes you'll see, you know, people doing battle damage on something. And it's just like way over the top. And it's like, it's like every centimeter is is damaged and it's like and the, the model just ends up looking kind of messy even though it could be done really really well it's the model at a distance just looks messy and it's just man you know and you know it's it's you know it's one of those things that you just kind of you know less is more less is more less is more less uh, is more. <laughs> I don't know where I was. I don't know where I was going with any of that. <laughs> it's just for any of you guys out there who are annoyed by that sound. <laughs> like me. <laughs> Ultimate Res, so has Chris looked at my work in progress email from dungeon super dungeon explore yet uh sean no i don't think i have 
So let's go to another email on that note since it's holy crap, it's quarter two. Jeez Louise. Um, this one is from Dr. Octopus. Hey, Chris, I'm about to embark upon a new Marine army, making it my fourth or fifth. Really? You got five, like you got that many space marines? Army? Dude, ven venture out a little bit. <laughs> Get outside the comfort zone. Just, just a hair, just a hair. <laughs> I think I settled on using sons of Horus color scheme. My question is how would you go about creating the tone of green in the first at attachment? I know Forge World put out a guide on how to do it, but in my experience comes out completely different colored tone. And admittedly, I'm not willing to recreate a mix of four different colors for several squads. I did try an alternate scheme I found online, which is mid gray highlighted up then shaded with Kalia, 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 jeez, Kalia green shade. And while it was substantially easier and quicker on my test pieces, I found pooling to be an issue and to a lesser extent consistency. The second attachment to show the color if it comes out and I'll stress they are not work. And I'll stress they are not work. Again, the question is, how would you create a tone of green in the first attachment? Also, how would you do maroon for ornamentation, such as cloaks and claws? Also, also, please tell me that there will be a way of the brush shirt with a monkey emblazoned on it. Thanks again, Internet Monkey 42 <laughs> Okay, and so he sent me pictures, but I'm they're, they're, I'm pretty sure they're forger. They're not his pictures. I think they're forger pictures. Yeah, because one's a picture of Loken. And that level of green, that level of green, okay, that looks like, that almost looks like uh, Incubi Darkness with a little bit of white added to it. And you, you can highlight upwards of it. Incubi Darkness is one of the new colors. Uh, yeah, there it is. Incubi Darkness is one of the new colors. And it's going to be kind of hard to see on camera. But it it is almost like that this color, but with a little bit more white attitude. Now, it doesn't look like much white to get it up from uh, like up a little bit higher than this because this is actually more of like a incubate darkness is like a green but it's got like a little bit of blue to it so it actually has more of a uh like this turquoise kind of uh teal color and so but that's how that looks so this might be an easy way to get to that kind of look is it going to be exactly the same well without trying it myself I could not say. As far as that maroon look for the cloak, you're looking at... <laughs> I'm wondering if you could go as easy as something like corn red with juicy violet on top of it. A thin layer of juicy violet, not a heavy layer. Or you could go with something like... Mephiston red or corn red corn red because it's kind of uh, uh, muted it's 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 a very subdued kind of red it's not you know it's not a vibrant red it's really kind of dull and yeah to get the bit of that maroon you got to throw a little bit of the blue in right that little bit of purple it takes you a bit more to the purple but like the model itself is it doesn't seem like it's been shaded or highlighted like it seems like it's almost like just like one color and so and it's like the light of the camera kind of creating those looks so <clears throat> yeah but as far as that base color goes yeah something like that um and then the other picture you sent now i don't know if this is your model or is it hold on here let me have a look here not my test model no so it's not his model yeah, and so you can start off with the black and work your way up through the Incubi Darkness to where you're adding just a bit of white to it to brighten it up and create some edge highlights. Just like the second picture you sent me, Doc, uh, Dr. Rockpus. 
And because, I mean, like, his his work in this picture, it looks like he started off with something that looked like Incubi Darkness, threw that Kalia green shade on it, which is like, a, a, it's like a, a turquoise, it's a greeny blue, deepened it down, and then... Yeah, you could throw a little bit of white into that ink by darkness and just create that edge highlight. I didn't even see a lot of transitions, really. I thought there was, but it's it's not. It's just the way it was shaded. And so that's relatively simple to create, really. But, um, yeah, I can't be 100% sure. Uh, as far as the maroon goes, yeah. Like, starting off with a red and then using something like Druchi Violet, just a tint. Now, when I say just a tint, I mean you're, you're laying the shade down on top in in a thin fashion you're not letting it really pool up anywhere you're just kind of just and just tinting the overall surface or you could take um something like corn red and a little bit of uh negroth uh negroth night which is a, this like deep purple and do like a probably like a three to one negroth three red to one purple and throw that onto the cape if you don't have to do too many, but again, if you're doing a whole bunch of Marines like that, then you're at, you're probably, no, but not everybody has capes. So yeah, if you might want to try it like that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent and I, I'm not, um, I'm not familiar with the painting guide that describes how to create that color scheme like that. But if I had to break it down from how that picture looks, yeah, that's kind of how I would go about it. The easiest way, really, is, <laughs> is usually the more efficient way to, to go about it. So, let's get to, well, let's have a quick look here in the comments. Let's see if there's anybody directing any kind of comments, questions. Tolo, Chris, do a small commission for 50th. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'm not too far behind in the comments here. Well, I, I, I kind of skipped ahead. I kind of skipped some people. I'm sorry. Oh, Jeb, Jeb U nine eleven. He's joined us. Awesome. Awesome. Just awesome. It is complete. The circle is now complete. <laughs> I don't know why, but I've been doing a bunch of Star Wars dialogue lately. I don't know why. Probably because I have a hankering to watch a Star Wars. I don't watch Star Wars every day. Sometimes I get a hankering for one. I had a hankering to watch Episode Four the other day. I might have to go home now. Go watch some episode four. Maybe. Kind of excited to see the new one. And scared as well. Excited and scared. <laughs> On that note of excited and scared, let's have a look at Raziel Wargamer X. Hi, I have a question for you. Hey, Chris. Or hey there, Chris. Hi there, Chris. Hope you're well. I wanted to ask you a question about which airbrush compressor you are currently using. Do you have any advice about compressors in general and perhaps some tips for controlling PSI? What might be some common PSI levels you are using? Well, Resiel, I am using uh, the Badger, uh, pa Badger Patriot, uh, the Badger, um, it's, it's, a, it's a big one and it's, and it's got the, um, crap it's, <laughs> it's heavy i don't want to lift it it's all plugged in it's got the um uh, adjuster and the uh, moisture trap and so you can adjust the uh, it's not really adjusting the pressure in which the tank is is spraying it's more like just like a control valve and you can kind of uh control the pressure from from the tank and a lot of lately, I like I used to kind of spray at sixty, but you know I'm st I'm still really relatively new to this too. And like some stuff, I was getting really good results from like priming. Uh, I was getting really good results at priming for sixty. Like I was using my Vallejo primers and the um, the new Minotaur primer or Badger's new primer, and I was using them at sixty. And then when I went down to forty, I found that my brush was getting kind of clogged. And it wasn't, it was like the, the paint was just drawing at the tip and it was, you know what I mean? Like I wasn't, whereas 60, the paint was shooting right out and I was coating and everything was cool. And so I don't know, like, it seems like more of a heavier body or, um, 
like whatever primer is because primer is not like a normal paint right because primer uh dries with the surface and it's kind of designed to be extra sticky and you know what i mean like it's it got, it's got different qualities than paint primer is not the same as paint although you can prime with paint but you're better off priming with primer and sorry something in my eye in my eyeball and you can you can prime uh you know, like I was having a lot of success at 60 PSI and, and then when I was generally working, I was working with 40 PSI and, you know, that was all right. But then I, a lot of times I'm hearing, you know, um, coming down even further in PSI when doing, um, you know, f small areas or finer details and things like that. And, you know, I haven't really, um, gotten into any of that yet because I don't do a lot of fine detail stuff. Like my, one of my first attempts at doing detail stuff was lightning on my, uh, hemlock. And I was using the, um, the, uh, chrome badger chrome to do the fine lines and it was doing them fine. And I think I was shooting probably pretty high. I think it was 40 with that. And you know, but yeah, as far as compressors, I mean, I'm not much of an airbrush guy. I, I found a compressor online on Flea Bay and it had the moisture trap, but it, but didn't have the extra tank, like the storage tank, because the storage tank is actually quite nice because if you're going to get a compressor, okay, you'll see some that are just a compressor motor and then you can have your attachments right to there from the compressor motor. But it's also nice to have the ones that have the tank. Okay. Because sometimes the compressor as the compressor motor is running, it'll throw those spurts out, right? Because as the compressor motor is going, it's building up pressure and it's going and it, it doesn't sound like that, but you know what I mean? It's throwing out little puffs of air at a time. And so that can actually translate in. Whereas if it, if it stores within the tank, then it's building a constant pressure in that tank. And so that when you start drawing off air, it's coming out at that constant pressure, but the tank will the pressure is changing as you're releasing air. So you're losing pressure as soon as you're doing it. And so oftentimes that's why the compressor will constantly keep kicking in. So, <laughs> but when you're working in a really kind of low PSI, I don't think it's that big a deal. Now I've heard a lot of people talk about that stuff, but when I'm, when I'm researching and I'm, I'm scanning around, you know, for, knowledge in airbrushing i don't look solely i don't even look half of the time i don't even look at people uh who works exclusively within miniatures or even modeling for that matter i don't even i i don't even read all their stuff i'm looking at airbrush artists who work on canvas and illustration and things like that i'm looking at uh auto body you know people who work on it in in that scale because tech brush technique is scalable and it all, it, it's all relative. It's all the same. And so when I'm looking at all these things, I'm, I'm trying to absorb as much information as I can from all those sources. So I'm looking at everything from, you know, painting houses and things like that to cars, to canvas illustration board. And you know what I mean? Those techniques that they use down to modeling a miniature and miniature last. So any, like, I don't even, because from, from what I've noticed, because airbrushing is, it's not new. There was a time when airbrushing was relatively new to miniature painting, but it still feels like that sometimes. And it doesn't feel like everybody who does airbrushing on miniatures knows how to properly airbrush. That's the way it seems to me. And it seems like a good and proper airbrush artist. Like, for example, for example, this is just an example. For example, the, the man recently died, but H.R. Uh, Giger, one of my favorite artists of the modern age, he heavily used an airbrush to achieve a lot of his, his uh, biometal techniques and stuff like that, right? to create a lot of those color rich ch color transitions you could really only do with an airbrush and it was easier to do with an airbrush and you know he would be a master at airbrushing and so any advice he could 
do he can you know instill would have been fantastic as far as and he he has talked at length about you know techniques and things he's done and you know how he achieves certain effects and things like that and so it's that kind of stuff that i'm watching all the time because it's that knowledge will translate into what we do it will so if you're out there looking for knowledge don't just look at the people who are miniature painters because not all of them have all the necessary skills even within that realm that it really it's look at the illustrators i think really the my biggest inspiration has been looking at the illustrators is the guys who's work who work within illustration them but also the guys who work within auto body as well or who are painting you know um who are painting airbrushing uh designs with on you know the gas tank of a motorbike things like that because they're doing essentially what we're doing right they're painting they're painting designs on top of you know an irregular surface right and an illustrator he's working on a flat surface and so he's got all this room and you know i mean he doesn't have to worry about the media on which he's working on he's only got to worry about committing his design to to form versus you know the guy who's working on a, a motorcycle gas tank he's got to consider the curvature of that gas tank as he's working and so as us with as you know airbrushing miniatures and tanks and things like that that's the same concerns we have we have to concern ourselves with the curvature of the model the sculpture and really that's what it's all about it's it's the sculptures so yeah <laughs> where were we with any of that um yeah so <laughs> really quick raziel i don't know if i answered your question or not um but if you're gonna work detail, uh, low PSI, like 15, go as low as 15 PSI. I, I used to use, like with my old compressor, I used to go uh, 25. And 25 was just pretty much my general work speed. But my comp my old compressor didn't have a storage tank, whereas this new compressor I have, it does have a storage tank. And so it, it just, it gives me a lot more consistent pressure. But anyway, don't be afraid to spend a bit of money on a compressor, as long as it's got the moisture trap, it's got a control valve, um, compressor motor, and a tank, and you're you're pretty much set. It's probably going to run you anywhere from 100 to 200, but a good compressor, you know, is going to save you lots of time. And especially if you can control that psi, and you do want that, you do want to control, and you do need the moisture trap. And also, when you get the thing, you have to know what uh, fittings your brush are, so that you can have the appropriate fittings. For your compressor so yeah <laughs> let's get back to the comments <laughs> oh man oh where am i where am i where am i oh i'm just oh i don't even know where we are oh my god <laughs> resident war gamer yes a new hope yeah i was thinking about watching that one later <laughs> Jebu 911 Jebu Jeb Jebu Nice you pronounced my name quite well <laughs> and I just completely messed it up as I said that <laughs> Oh jeez <laughs> No consistency eh? Thanks for the camouflage quick tips you made as I requested a while back those were useful and amazing well you're welcome thank you Wow, Raziel, wow, I forgot I said that name. It wasn't that long ago, Raziel. It was only 12 days ago, dude. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Totally forgot I sent that in. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Haldane Urbanist, does anyone else see an ad for Militech AC compressors, the beginnings of Cyberpunk's Militech Spooky? <laughs> Graham Collin. When I were a lad, episode four or a new hope was simply known as Star Wars. Yes. Yeah, I remember when it was just Star Wars too. And then Well, it was what? The re release. Ninety seven it was the re release when it got called and or no, it was a new hope before that, but it was episode seven or episode four before that. Yeah. Somewhere around then. Painting Lackey, the Badger, Soter Soter. 
Sotar 2020 was on sale on, e- on Amazon for 89 Don't know if it still is. Don't. Don't know. Graham Collin, and yes, I queued out- outside the cinema to see it in 77. <laughs> No, I was I was uh, two two years old when the original Star Wars came out. But my mommy took me to see Empire Strikes Back in the theater, and that was what eighty, and I remember that. And then I saw Return of the Jedi when in eighty three, and I was what eight. So yeah, I went I went to those, but not not the original. <laughs> I didn't see the original in the theater, but when they did the original. When when they when they first threw in the CG crap and everything like that was was the re-release in '97 when they went back to the theater. I think it was. Yeah, it was around then, right? Because they were gearing up for Episode One, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it all went. And so, yeah, I wanted to see Episode One in the theater because I had never seen it in the theater. I had seen Empire Strikes Back in the theater, and I had seen Return of the Jedi, but yeah, I never saw the first one. Where were we going with that? I don't know. The badass. Jeez, Chris, put your specs back on, man. You look mean. <laughs> mean? That's not nice. Hurt my feelings. <laughs> Dan Belanger. Who made it about four minutes to go? Damn it. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to show up pretty early. You missed the bus. <laughs> you missed the bus. I missed the bus. We all missed the bus. Uh, Raziel Wargamer, but I have a tight budget. Yeah, and so save your pennies, dude. I mean, like, okay, well, if you if you're on a tight budget, gotta ask yourself: Do you really need an airbrush? Do you need one? Right? If you're going to be, you're not going to be, are you? Are you going to be a commission type service? Are you? Is that the goal to become a commission painter? In which case. You just offset your costs to uh, to offset the expenditure that the airbrush costs you and the paints. Because that's the other thing too, right, Rezia? If you're going to get into airbrushing, you, you, you're you better off getting the paints. And, you know, that's that's another 200 bucks. And then you got to upkeep the thing. And upkeep, airbrush is, <laughs> airbrushing is all about upkeeping. I should film myself, I think I have filmed myself in real time, working through colors, going through like two or three colors. I can't remember which video it was, but I'm pretty sure I I just filmed it all. And, you know, like half the time, like it's five minutes spraying, 10 minutes cleaning, one minute spraying, 10 minutes cleaning. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like it just goes in that kind of pattern. It just... You spend more of your time cleaning the brush and preparing for the next color rather than actually laying the color down. It's a pain. Pain. Pain in the behind. Who's behind? My behind. Um, Where am I? Graham Collin, I was 12. <laughs> I was two. So you're 10 years older than me. <gasps> I know how old you are because I can do math. I can do math. Ha ha ha. Raziel Gamer. At Chris. Yeah, I was watching those other pros as well. They use them in makeup. Oh, makeup too. Yeah, that's another one. Makeup. Yeah. So, absorb the information everywhere. Don't just, just don't take everybody else's word for it who, you know, because I mean, like, we're all, we're all painting miniatures here. But, don't look at solely the people who are painting miniatures for airbrush info. Look at everybody that's doing airbrushing. Everybody. Right, and I even forgot about makeup and na- uh, nail artists, <laughs> people who do uh, uh, fingernails. Look at them too. Same, same thing. Like there are some consistencies that you'll find, but they're consistencies. So if it's a consistency across many different uh, platforms, then you know it's kind of like a universal truth kind of thing, right? So you just, you know, it's like the speed of light. I don't know where it's going. I think, like but anyway. <laughs> Uh, Raziel working in 1980. Oh, okay. So you're not a, not an entirely young guy. Painting Lackey. Get a regular compressor with a large tank. It makes a lot of noise when the pressure is building up, but then you can use the airbrush a long time before the compressor restarts. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure you can find some deals out there, but 
Resident Evil Wargamer. Oh yeah, Giger was a legend. Yes, he was. He was great. Innovative. And that's all it takes, you know? And, you know, it's kind of amazing how, you know, like, when he died, that not more people made a deal of it. Because, you know, history will show he him being one of the great inspirations for the 21st century of art because so much is emulated from his work now if any of you have ever looked at some of his work because he's the guy who created the alien right and his work is like that is you know it's not not quite his mona lisa but it's it's up there and he's got a lot of other crazier stuff and you know, like you even go through like his sketchbook and stuff like that oh man it's <laughs> it's out there <laughs> and you know um but that's i mean that's art that's the artist and you know you don't know what you're going to do until you push at the you know the boundaries of of taste and what can be done and you know, he would, you know, if he wasn't the man he was, he never would have conceptualized the, the merging of, of flesh and metal in as uh, a perverse kind of way as which he initially conceptualized, right? And thank goodness for it. Thank goodness that he, he did that. And I think really it was his response to, you know, the coming of the digital age and yeah. Because he created that stuff back in the 70s. Computers were still... Where they were just becoming smaller and, you know... Yeah. What time is it? Holy crap, it's after two! <laughs> you guys get me talking on stuff and... Yeah. <laughs> Haldane Urban is... Alien is one of the few films I watch again and again and again. Yes. Alien, Aliens. Alien 3 is kind of... Meh. Alien 4 was kind of, meh. but Alien and Aliens, oh, great films, great films, great, wonderful. Aliens, Aliens for me, Aliens is like the best of that series. I like Aliens a hair more than I like Alien, although Alien is scary as hell. I still like Aliens a little more just because it's action, you know what I mean? It's just it's a little bit, it's a little bit more testosterone in aliens than alien not that i feel that movies have to have a lot of testosterone it's just you know like it's just you know it's all the guns explosions and the excitement and you know freaking aliens coming out of the walls and you know it's great it's awesome it's still scary in its own right right jim white chris with analogous color scheme from the cyan magenta yellow color wheel should we avoid in miniature painting if any no no absolutely not and in my talk with, in my video on pre-shading, where I, I was pre-shading the models, or I, it's pre-shade, or I think I called it pre-war scotch. That's what it was. Airbrush new pre-war scotch. I was going through um, pre-shading models. And then the, the follow-up video to that, I posted just a couple days ago, um, you know, basically laying ghost tints on top of the models that were pre-shaded. And essentially what I was trying to convey is that our normal color wheel we use in, uh, in miniature painting is the uh, red, yellow, blue color wheel. We use that. And that's the tradi traditional color wheel for painting, uh, most of the time canvas work, and um, for us for, as miniature painters. That's really our, our color wheel. But... With the advent of you know the 20th century and printing, the um, the cyan, magenta, and yellow color wheel has become the 20th and 21st century. The cyan, magenta color wheel. A lot of people think that is the proper color wheel. That that's that's the color wheel. And in some regards, yes, it is. But then there's others that uh, the color wheel is red, blue, and green. Those are the primary colors. So you have three color wheels, right? Red, yellow, red, yellow, blue, the traditional color wheel. Then, according to science, we have red, blue, green, 
as the color wheel, as it pertains to light. Then we have in the 20th century and 21st century, cyan, magenta, yellow color wheel, or cy- CMYK, K? CMYK, K being the black. <clears throat> Those three color wheels, all are valid. The, there are some artists out there who think that one color wheel is the proper color wheel over the other ones. They're not. They're all valid. They're all valid. When talking about light, television, screens, things like that, display screen, we're talking about red, blue, green, because those are the pixels in which we see. And in, 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 in light, red and green, or yellow, blue and green, make yellow. Or in, I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, in light, yeah. But in painting, in pigment, and in uh, painting on top of each other, and you know what I mean, like creating with pigments, red, blue, green is is the is the those are the primary colors because you can't mix paints to create those colors. The cyan, magenta, yellow color wheel, okay, is in regards to like printing, okay. When you don't, ha- when you're laying the color on a white surface, you're getting cyan, magenta, yellow, and then with, because of the white, you lay down your uh, cyan and magenta, that's when you start getting your purples. You lay down your magenta and your yellow, you start getting reds and oranges. Okay? That just comes from the printing aspect. And is the cyan magenta yellow color wheel, you know, the proper color wheel? No, because it doesn't apply when you are painting on canvas or painting on miniatures or in, like our needs. We are... When we're painting miniatures, for the most part, we are the we are traditional color wheel painters. Now, <laughs> to go back a second, when I was showing the pre shading, when I when I went from black to a gray to a white on the model, creating the pre shades, right, creating all the highlights with the airbrush and everything like that, and then I went in on with the uh, ghost tints. The ghost tints you can follow the cyan, magenta, yellow color wheel. In that regards, because you are laying the color on top of the a grayscale, essentially a white to black grayscale, and you lay those colors on, and you're getting all your color transitions. You want to create reds, lay a little bit of magenta, lay a little bit of yellow, or mix the two and slap it on, and there you go. And in the fact that the fun part with the ghost tints are that you can lay a thin layer of one and lay a thin layer of the other, and if you know how they're interacting and what mixtures you have in and how density, you can create your colors right onto the model. And yeah, so <laughs> sorry, I get kind of caught up in the cold color wheel things because <laughs> there's so many artists out there who feel like, and I'm serious, like this, like this is just one of those things. There's so many artists out there who think that the cyan magenta yellow color wheel is the color wheel. It's it 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 it, it doesn't apply. It's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, I don't know. It's just, (laughs) I don't know. I'm tired. What time? Holy crap. It's 20 after. (laughs) I didn't even get to all my emails as as usual, apparently now, as, as, as is the, the, uh, the norm these days, apparently. So I do apologize to everybody who has sent in emails. And of course, keep t- continue to send me emails because, you know, I enjoy it. I like getting emails. I like showing off you guys' work. I like answering you guys' questions. And yeah, you know. So I think we're done for now. Hopefully we are. Um, hopefully we learned something today. Hopefully we had a little bit of laughs. Hopefully we had a bit of fun. But, oh, excuse me, man, burping. Oh, burping. So professional, huh? <laughs> yeah, I can see you guys. Uh, no, I'm not sitting here reading any more comments. I'm not reading, you know what? You know, maybe I'll just drop this chat thing altogether because this is a huge distraction from answering people's, people's questions. <laughs> and so on that note, I'm out of here. Keep sending those emails. 
to chris at miniwargaming.com or send them through the YouTube channel. I do get those. Although I do prefer um, uh, getting them through uh, chris at miniwargaming. Um, send them in. T-shirts, available about the link below. I'm going to be producing more designs for that as well, just for extra added fun. You know, uh, you know, they don't make me a ton of money or anything, but they do help. They do, you know, offset some costs of some stuff. And as always, take care of your brushes. They'll take care of you. And, you know, big thanks to Joaquin for having a brilliant idea of on the 50th show, we're going to do it. We're going to do some giveaway stuff. What we're going to learn, I have no idea or what we're going to learn. What are we going to give away? Uh, I think we'll give away one of those brush sets. Maybe some DVDs. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have some laughs. We'll try and answer a few more emails. I'll probably try and get to the ones I got today. <laughs> I don't know. That's so bad, I know. Uh, take care of your brushes. They'll take care of you. I will see you guys in the next show. Be good. And live long and prosper. I <laughs> I've, I've got nothing. I'm tired. Oh, I I just want to lay down now. Oh, oh God. Oh.